Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm your host D-Day bringing you more Let's Play Enigmatica 6. So as you can see, I've been messing around with uh, making this guy look a little bit cooler. Yes, I did copy Lashmac. He did put campfires in the top uh, to make the smoke particles. I think it's really cool. It's a great idea. Um, I'm doing a little bit of a different design. Uh, over here, as a little bit of, of an update, I found one of these vexing arcwood, but in purple. I put it... Uh, no, I didn't put that one. I had it in there before. I put a mahogany sapling in here for the purple planks into a botany pot, which is making all of the, uh, the wood that we need. So this is like super, super basic uh, tree farm, if you want, specific. Like, I'm going to be turning these into building blocks for the build as soon as we get out of this temporary area. Over here I have uh, two examples of these framed drawers that I think are really cool. Uh, you put them into a crafting grid like this. And depending on where you put the piece, let me grab one piece of this guy. Oh, it's going into my diagonal. Whoops. Grab one of these guys. So depending on where you put it, this slot to the left determines the faces, and then this slot above it determines the frame around it. So right now I'm tempted to go with the one on the left, since if you put it into a wall, this one does look cooler as a singular block, but I think it's going to be super disorienting for the eyes. And I did leave it up to Twitch chat. Twitch chat did agree that the one on the left is the way we're going to go. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, we already have, let's see, shift, is it shift click? Yeah, it's shift click. We only need eight. And let's see, the rest are in my dank null. So we're going to go like this. Yeah, you make them like that. All right, and it's sunset again. So let me sleep before we get jumped. Okay, today's episode is going to focus on resourceful bees. I'm super excited about that. Uh, these are the eight framed drawers that we're going to do. Yeah, I do, I do like this. I think it looks really nice. Come on. There we go. Yeah, that's going to be a pretty cool wall to look at. And then, yeah, this will go back into my dank null. So, yeah, I wanted to show you guys frame drawers. And I went ahead and I made a backpack out of leather and a chest and string. And then, yeah, when you hit use on the backpack, you can upgrade it. It gets bigger with iron, gets bigger with gold, and it gets bigger with diamonds. And I decided that these eight diamonds were going to be worth the upgrade slot. Let's get rid of that one. I made a pickup upgrade, which is a sticky piston, uh, string, redstone, and an upgrade base, which is string and gold. That will make it so that right here, everything you pick up, unless I have it for dank null first, it'll go into my backpack before going into this inventory. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, there's also a magnet upgrade, which requires two ender pearls and another pickup upgrade. Uh, I don't want to get this because it's it would be a waste of the two ender pearls because I got super lucky, and uh, while I was prepping for the episode, I found a universal attractor, so I put that there, and now I have a magnet this way. What I do want is this feeding upgrade. It feeds the player with food from the backpack's inventory, so I don't need to eat anymore, and be auto feeding. Uh, I'm missing an apple and I'm missing an ender pearl, so. I'm going to try to let the night go through and snag one ender pearl so we can make this upgrade for the backpack. Uh, also, if you see, all of the tools that I have down here are all made out of slime steel. Slime steel pickaxe, slime steel cleaver, the sledgehammer, and the mattock. Uh, slime steel definitely is the way to go. It is super easy to make. You alloy it. You only need lava because it doesn't require more than 1,000. It's seared stone, sky slime, and molten iron. And sky slime, st 
the sorry <laughs> the sky slime is uh, just the slime balls you get from the island or from the monsters. And I made some slime boots as well. And as you can see, the slime steel cleaver, it has 10.23 damage. Oh, we did another run. So I built a another portal just to agitate Lashmac because he says it has to be a 2x2. Two two. And uh, I like doing my own thing. So I did make a uh, retractable nether portal. Unfortunately, this guy is super duper slow because I don't have a rotational speed controller, but you get the drill. It'll it'll go up and down in time, and I put a frame here with my flint and steel for it. So this way I can make another portal go away. We did another run right before uh, the episode. If you want to see that, hit up Twitch. Uh, it, it'll be saved as a VOD. So let's go and uh, fill in the cleavers too or one upgrade slot with some quartz. There we go. And it's at 13.15 now, so that's pretty good. I like that. Abilities one, uh, I did go out and find the cornflower required for fortune. There we go. So it has luck, and I want luck on my pickaxe as well. There we go, so that's how you put fortune. Uh, Oh cool, it's no longer looting on the sword, it's just luck. We got that. Uh, slime steel. Slime wood is easy. Slime wood is melting the green slime balls and then just casting it on uh, a wooden tool. So the reason why I went with the slime wood is because of that modifier right there. Uh, overgrowth 1. It's kind of like Mending Moss and Over Slime, which both the uh, Slime Steel and the Slime Wood uh, give you that Over Slime. So if you look under Durability, which is <laughs> ridiculous, 6,478 Durability, it has Over Slime 450 out of 450. What the Overgrowth does is it's like Mending Moss for that 450. So it will regenerate the over slime and uh, past the durability, you'll have to use uh, sharpening kits for that material, which I think I have one. Yeah, I have one slime steel repair kit just in case. So I made all of my uh, pieces have one, at least one overgrowth and the rest is slime steel uh, for the durability and for the over slime, which is, it's pretty legit. And then, yeah, I made a dank null, which is super easy. Barrel and coal, surrounded by redstone, surrounded by gold. And then the next one is emerald, and that one is a little bit too expensive for me right now. All right, so we do have the feeding upgrade as a to-do. We want to get into resourceful bees. And uh, to do that, what I really wanted to do was... Uh, Check out the quest book, because we haven't opened up the quest book yet. We're going to go here to this side has the arrow and scroll all the way down to resourceful bees. Today's episode is going to be about resourceful bees. So here I'm going to click this. Yes, we're going to get empty bee jars and the beepedia. And empty bee jars, we immediately get that quest. So we get an even more empty bee jars. <laughs> Bee box, uh, bee jar can use for transport up to 10 bees at a time. So this probably is, yeah, we need beeswax, which will get beeswax from the centrifuge later on down the line. Oop, not backspace. Combs, we'll get that. Vanilla bee mechanics, okay, we'll get experience. So we need any resourceful bee comb. Experience. Okay, just teaches you the different kinds. There we go. Yep, teaching, teaching. Yep, even more. A lot of experience. Mutations, yeah, we'll do all that today. So we need to get a uh, the two bees that I want, and we need to get a bee nest. And then the rest, the combs, 
and the honey wax will do when we get the centrifuge. Oh, do I have to make the manual centrifuge? I have to make it. Okay. To get credit for the centrifuge that I want to do, the powered centrifuge, I have to do the manual one too. All right. So now that we're ready, uh, empty bee jars, we can put that on our hot bar. We need to find two bees specifically uh, for the iron bee, because that's what I want. I want iron combs, so we need to find a forest bee, and we need to find a sandy bee. So that is going to be where we have to go search for them. So I'm assuming the forest bee is going to be in a forest, and the sandy bee is going to be in the desert. So I will cut back when we get the bees. It's pretty funny. That's actually pretty funny. Backpack, turtle helmet, and flippers. Going super fast. Enderman. Enderman. Whoa! Spider-Man attacking. Summon wolf. Who is this guy? Witch hunter? I'm getting whooped. Where's my Enderman? Don't you dare run away from me. Oh yeah! Another water bee, isn't it? Yeah, I don't need water bees. What's that? There's a bee over here. Homeboy's got some serious armor going. What is this guy? The Sandy Bee. We got one. Bye-o. ICB, what are you? Forest bee, we got him. Come here, got him. So we have a forest bee and we have a sandy bee. That's what we need. All right. Apple, golden apple. Feeding upgrade. Boop. Block. Now I can put all of my food in here and it will eat. Does it make the sound for eating? Got it. Nice. Now we can auto eat from our backpack. What? What? Where? Where'd you come from? We have forest bee, sandy bee, empty bee jars, and sand and logs. All right. Forest bee, sandy bee. Oh, cool. You're already changing stuff. Sand. Come back here, homie. Where are you going? Did I get him? No. Bro. You're gonna go back up? Dude, you're too far away now, aren't you? Did I lose? Dude. The bead totally left, didn't it? row. Come on, man. I trusted you. Okay, try number two. Now they can't escape. Forest, Sandy. Oh, are you guys still in love? Yep, there we go. Iron. Iron B. And let's see, can we breed? Oh, there's a cooldown, huh? There's a cooldown. So I'm gonna do this four times so we can get four iron bees. Alright, so the bees have been breeding. 
and I didn't know it's a 20 minute timer for the bee to mature. So here we go. That is our fourth mature iron bee. So we have four iron bees and put these guys in jars. I'm being pushed around, aren't I? This guy, Sandy, Forest. And then I need to make sure I don't mix up these guys because they still need to grow. The two babies. Okay. These guys I'm going to put up so I don't mix them up. Awesome. Let's go this way. So what I'm going to do is I am going to build this underground because, uh, yeah, if, if you were on Twitch, you saw the, the sandy bee got away from me. Oh, I forgot. Forgot that piece. I'll get that off camera. All right, so we have a little bit of crafting to do first. Uh, let's see. So we did the iron bee and we bred the sandy bee and the forest bee. We can get rid of that. Uh, quest book wise, we need to make the manual centrifuge first for a lever. And then here's our manual centrifuge. Andy centrifuging. And I do want to keep this near the smeltery because I already have an idea for what we're going to do. So I'll put it right there. Uh, good thing I chunk loaded. <laughs> All right. So now that we have that guy, what I need to make is the centrifuge that runs on RF. So we need smooth stone. I did set that for breeding stone and then we need to put it back in for smooth stone we are also going to need an iron and bucket and iron and piston all right redstone piston and the centrifuge so there we go this one's going to be faster and run on rf so this guy let's put him actually let's move these guys around put this guy here I went ahead and off camera made the coal generator from RF tools, which is easy. It's any coal or bitumen, uh, redstone torches, machine frame, iron, gold, and blue dye, which is lapis. And I just wanted a basic device that could make us some RF. Put the centrifuge on top. Let this guy run. There we go. It's making. We're also going to make some glass jars. And the glass jars we can pop in here. Cool. Alright, so the setup that I want to make, we need to use shears to go get some grass. We need eight pieces of grass. Did I get it? Okay, yeah. Just making sure. Eight pieces of grass and the bee nest that we picked up. Tier 1 beehive, which can hold four bees. That's why I wanted four iron bees. So we have the beehive. We have dispenser, which is vanilla. The scraper from uh, resourceful bees. Super easy. And the timer. Are also from RF tools. So this one, clock, vanilla stuff, machine base stone, uh, gold nuggets. Oh, we need to make a rail. One set of rails, because I only need uh, a singular rail. There we go. And then we want to make a, a really fancy chest. While that's cooking, we need to make a mine cart with hopper. So let's make a hopper and a mine cart. Can't do it here, right? There we go, minecart with hopper. Six glass. Gold chest. And diamond chest. Cool. So 
let's go downstairs. I decided I'm going to put this guy downstairs because, yeah, they these bees, they fly around everywhere. So let's see, what would be a good place to set this? We have the bee breeding room right here. So let's go ahead and mine out this area just a little bit. Alright, so we're going to have the chest, put the hopper back here, we're going to put the rail right here, and then let's see, we have andesite, but I want to keep that. Let's go with Gabra, like this, so that the minecart doesn't fall off. We go. And then above this guy, we're going to do dirt. Like that. Put one flower right here. We're going to put the beehive right here so that this little slot will face the flower. And then we need to make sure that the bee only has one spot to come out and one air block. Let's do Gabro. Gabro. The one air block here. Down. Whoops. There we go. And one behind. Gotta block that one off. Actually, what we need to do is we need to put the dispenser. The dispenser blocks this. Nope. So let's grab the timer. We'll face that way and we'll set this 300 sounds fine. And then we need to click this guy. So now that this is facing the flower and the dispenser is facing the beehive, inside the dispenser we're going to put the scraper because it does not have a uh, durability. Uh, if you use shears, the shears do have a, dis uh, a durability attached to them. This guy will go off and will shear the beehive. That's what I get, huh? All right, so we made our tinkers uh, glass. We have weathered limestone. I'm going to block the path behind me so that these bees can only go towards the uh, beehive and they won't fly away from me. Ooh, let me make sure that we have a ceiling. There we go. There's no holes. Put a torch up here. Bloop. All right, now that we're blocked off, the bees have nowhere to go. Let's set this up. One, two, three. Block that way. One, two, three. Block that way. One, two, three right here so we can see. And then let's get these bad boys out. Oh, also I made a campfire so that the beehive can always be smoked. There we go. Now it'll be smoked because it's under the beehive. The bees will get angry with us. Let's see. There, there. And then I can hop up for the other ones. So let's see, two of them out. Blop and blop. And three and four. They all like the flower, and let's see, they should all go into the uh, apiary. And then we can seal it behind them. One, two,
Come on, buddies. Hey, where are you going? Supposed to go inside, buddy. Hopefully the other two won't come out. One, and there we go. And now they're sealed in. So now they only have one place to go. There's one air block above the flower. So they'll pop out uh, in the air block, they'll immediately touch the flower, and then they'll go back into the, uh, the apiary. The timer in the back is going off. I can set this to a different timer if I wanted to, if I didn't want to listen to the clicking the entire time. Uh, but it clicks the dispenser. The scraper does not have a durability, so it's not going to break. Uh, let me do one more thing. Let me make sure I am inside my chunk loaded area. Yeah, I'm inside my chunk loaded area. Campfire is going to keep them docile. And it says there at the bottom, smoked true. Honey level zero, bees four out of four. So this is a tier one beehive. And then whenever something happens inside the beehive, uh, the what the scraper does is it scrapes the beehive and it sends the honeycombs flying in all directions but since we only have one exit point all the other ones are uh, blocked it'll spit out right here where the flower is and under the flower we have the uh, hopping minecart which pulls the items down into the hopper which then drops them into this diamond chest so i'm just going to sit here for a second and uh, make sure it works so here it is. Uh, I made the room look a little bit clean and uh, I knocked out the wall behind me so that I could get the entire uh, beehive in uh, in view for you guys. So that's what it looks like. Uh, you can make it fancier, make it look better. I probably will. I'll probably make uh, a really huge bee nest out of every single resource bee that we can breed. Uh, what happens is down here, now we are getting iron honeycombs, and they'll pop out into this diamond chest. As long as I AFK and have this chunk loaded, this will continue to create iron honeycombs for me. And then the best part, taking these iron honeycombs upstairs, we can go to either the manual one or to the, uh, the RF-powered one. So I'll, I'll show the manual one for a second but then use the RF powered one. So with this guy, what we do, let's take one, some of these guys out. Because I do want the, uh, the honey that comes from it. So we'll do one, shift and right click with an empty hand. Oh, and I guess this guy, hand crank, only has a percentage chance use nope 50% let's try it again there we go iron chunk and it didn't give us any uh, uh, honey and then of course we can dump the iron chunk inside the smeltery to you or double so now we have uh, an infinite supply of iron going. Uh, let's try out the powered centrifuge. This one's getting power from the coal generator under it, and it does it automatically so that we don't have to shift and right click or do something silly like tape our, uh, our keys down <laughs> so that we can AFK. I'm hoping it's going to give me bad luck. That's what it's given me. Nope. Super bad luck. Okay. I was hoping to get some honey, because what I want to make next is uh, 
the honey generator. So let's go ahead and make this while the bees are making more honeycombs for us. We need a block of iron, one redstone. What are we missing? A bucket. And honey generator. Honey power. So I'm curious about this guy. I really hope that we can make uh, power this way instead of the coal generator, which at this point, it doesn't really matter. It'd just be cool. Oops. Put you there and ignore it. It does have a buffer too, it seems. Millibuckets to RF, and it has a buffer just like the coal generator, which I think the coal generator, let's test it out. It's full. Six. Let's see if these six vanish. I think the coal generator keeps burning even when the buffer is full. So that honey generator, we made that a lot faster than I thought. Let's go check and see. Maybe we got lucky. Not yet. <laughs> so I'll have to, I'll, I'll be right back again. Bloop. They all came out. All right, guys. So a little bit of an update. It is now uh, almost 24 hours later. Uh, as you can see, I added a, another bee, which is the glowstone bee. The reason why I did that is because uh, we need beeswax. So these guys, uh, they make glowstone honeycombs. So we'll, we'll grab a stack of these guys. This is also uh, a little bit under 24 hours of uh, what, how much product it makes for the glowstone, as well as the iron. And I made item frames for them. So this 50% chance to get an iron ingot, but then the smeltery doubles it. So that's a lot of iron. We'll take a stack of this with us too. And then upstairs, what I wanted to show, uh, which is also pretty cool. Right here, I already ran uh, an entire stack of the iron honeycombs through. It gave me 31 iron chunks, 15 nickel nuggets, and the iron honey bottle that I tried to get last time. This I tested out already. It does provide a little bit of uh, liquid honey, which turns into a good amount, almost 12,000 RF, which powers this guy. So this is exactly what I was hoping for. Now, when we run this through, we could probably attach a hopper. It will uh, process all of the iron honeycombs and the glowstone honeycombs, which what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the glowstone while I talk. The uh, iron chunks, the nickel nuggets, and the honey that comes out from the glass bottles will be able to stick into the machine under it, the honey generator, to create the power required for this mod, which to me, that's that's super exciting. What I'm hoping for with this glowstone, they had made six glowstone. I'm hoping for the byproduct here. I'll hit you on it real quick. Uh, centrifuge makes beeswax. Also 2% chance to make glowstone honey. So the 20% chance of beeswax is the reason why I did glowstone. Uh, I jumped into the nether glowstone bees. They spawn uh, in the wild. So I grabbed uh, two glowstone bees and I bred them to make four so that way I doubled up the setup uh, the reason why I wanted this was because it makes probably be faster if I just go this way tier four beehive going backwards we're gonna upgrade our tier one beehive with beeswax which we're getting from glowstone as well as any honeycomb it says down there accepts any resourceful bees resourceful honeycomb so any four honeycombs and four pieces of beeswax will upgrade our tier one beehive to tier two, which, uh, as you can see, max bees four, max bees six. So we can upgrade. I already have the two iron bees ready to upgrade to six. Max honeycombs eight, max honeycombs five, which uh, does not really matter that much. Uh, it just means that every time all of these come out, there's two extra honeycombs that can be scraped, auto-scraped, auto so it's a little bit quicker. And uh, the last thing I wanted to leave off on, here's the beeswax. 
is uh, with the feeding upgrade, I put one of every not eaten yet food that I could find. And what's really awesome is uh, when I'm running around and uh, let's see if I jump. Let's see, let's see. Maybe if we're lucky. It'll auto eat the new food. And uh, I have gotten an extra heart just by running, which I thought was pretty cool. Of course, the game is turning me into a joker. There we go. We ate. And it ate one of the not eaten yet foods, and it does count. So I'll leave it off on that. Next episode, we're going to dive deeper into resourceful bees. I'm super excited about getting uh, to tier two. Thank you so much for joining me today. Smash like to keep this series going and click on my dude here to subscribe for more modded Minecraft. If you want to see the full unedited progress, hit up my Twitch at twitch.tv slash ddanicus. I put the link in the description below for you guys.